we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sin to God who was faithful and just and who has promised to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, have mercy on us. We confess to you that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not trusted you with our whole heart. We have not loved one another in deed and in truth. In your compassion, forgive our sin, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our light and our truth. Amen. With joy. I proclaim to you that Almighty God, rich in mercy, abundant in love, forgives you all your sin and grants you newness of life in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. And our first hymn, we can sing out 634.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For your people here and have come to give you praise. For the strength to live your word, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, and defend us, O God. Now the feast and cell oops. Now the feast and celebration all of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. Now is the feast of the Lamb once slain whose blood has freed and united us to be one great people of God. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy into a God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. <clears throat> power and riches, wisdom and might, all honor and glory of Christ forever. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. Born them to dwell with us, to make us people of God, to make all things new. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Lord be with you. Pray. O oh God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to the world. Graft us into yourself and nurture our growth, that we may bear your truth and love to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading is from the 17th chapter of Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young wings. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel I will plant it in order that it may live, produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it very very kind of bird will live in the shades of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind all the trees of the field shall know that i am the lord i bring low the high tree and make high the low tree 
I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. The word of God, word of life. Psalm 92 will be spoken responsively. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High. On the psaltery and on the lyre, and to the melody of the harp. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree and shall spread abroad like a cedar of Lebanon. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be green and succulent. A reading from 2 Corinthians. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others, but we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to your consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on because we are conceived that convinced that no one has died for all. Therefore, all have died. And he died for us, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Word of God. Word of life. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, and then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all seeds on the earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs 
and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, oh, I should read this here. Um, I continue the, the series, if you will, of, of the, the questions of faith that I couldn't get to all of them in Lent, and so I'm continuing now. The question for today is, when will the pandemic end, and how do we maintain our faith? How do we stay in faith in the midst of pandemic? The text I'm going to refer you to here primarily is one that we know, I hope, is, is the Acts 2 reading. That's one our readers never uh, one to get because that's the one that says the Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia and Cappadocia and all of that. Right? But it is, it is what we typically hear at Pentecost. But, pandemic. Yeah. How many here are sick and tired of it? Yeah, uh, I thought that might be a little unanimous, right? <laughs> That's about where we are. The other day, um, David and I were at Moe's, and we were trying to decide what we wanted, and somebody uh, on the side door pops their head in because there was nothing saying about masks or anything. It was blank. And pops his head and says, Do we got to wear masks in here? <laughs> now, I, I waited a little bit, um, for somebody working there to give an answer, there was none. So David and I had our masks on. Right? And, and we looked over, and, and I looked over at him and said, well, there's no sign on the door, but in courtesy to others, I'm wearing my mask. He said, well, I'm sick of these things, and I'm not wearing it. And he came in. <laughs> now, not that I agreed with what he did, right? but we can all understand his feelings, can't we? Right? There, is, there is this sense of being so tired of it. We all have opinions on it, and, and, and we are still, from the beginning of this process, are getting, it depends on what you pick up, what you read, who you listen to, all these differing opinions on what, to do, where to steer the ship, right? We're still getting it, and everybody wants us to go in a different direction. I just think I'm ready to steer it to port. <laughs> Done, right? And that's kind of how it feels. And, and there's a real sense of that, that level of frustration, and so when we hear, when is this going to end, it... it I think the emotional answer is not soon enough. Now, the thing is, when, when we, we kind of grab a hold of that concept, go, go to our disciples in Acts. Now, I'm, I'm going from Luke into Acts here because probably they are the same authors author, I should say. Um, so in Luke, right at the tail end, we've, we've got them on the road to Bethany and Jesus is there and he ascends. And he's gone. Now, they had just experienced this whole thing. He had come back, said, I'm alive, I have risen. And, and, and now they're alone. 
And Jesus was the one who ran the show, right? Jesus was the one who taught all the parables, told them what towns they were going to, all those kinds of things. He was the guy. And now he was gone. And they found themselves stuck in this upper room, probably the same one they used for the Last Supper. And I have no idea what to do. Now, in their own history, they had, they had stuff that they had to deal with over time, right? And, and they knew that. But never once did they have to deal with somebody who died and rose again, and they witnessed it. This was new. They couldn't go over to their file drawer and pull out something to say, oh, this is how you deal with this. Wasn't there. Some of you have heard me say that. And when we talk about, well, how do we deal with the pandemic? I said, well, I got a lot of stuff in my file drawer, but none is it about a pandemic. Right? So there the disciples were probably scared out of their wits. Now, before, before we, we take that next step with them, though, you know, St. Andrews, in its short little history, has had to deal with some stuff, hasn't it? Right? A pastor leaving pretty quickly. Um, uh, not trusting so much what what the greater church has to say and put your own kinds of things in there, right? St. Andrews could go over to a file drawer and say, well, when this happened, we did. When this happened, we did. And, and we find ourselves in the same position there, don't we? There's nothing in that file drawer for pandemic. Now, thing is, Jesus did go. But the disciples were never alone. How quickly, and probably scary, especially that first time through, that the Holy Spirit burst into that room. Now, there was a lot going on in that, that experience. But, and then we had flames, tongues, Flames, tongues as of fire landing on each one of them, right? That's, that's kind of what that is. So they had fire bouncing on their heads. The Holy Spirit, here we go. Imagine that sight. God was with them. God was with them in a big way. This isn't just, okay, I'm by. All right, now I'm going to send you an outline. This is what you do. Um, good luck. This is, we're going to do this. We're going to do it well. And, and here we go. Follow me. And if you need a little push, there's a little fire bouncing on your head. All right? All right? All right? So, so the disciples were told and lived and breathed with the Holy Spirit. And Acts is testimony to that. Well, here's the thing. I have seen the fire of the Holy Spirit bounce around here too. It was a joyous thing last week, wasn't it? When people came in and they saw each other for like the first time in I don't know how long, and, and it was a joyous thing. Now, it was kind of funny that everybody kind of separated to the shade, you know. But, but that aside, <laughs> it, people, and, and that was the Holy Spirit. That was the joy of the Spirit. If, if you go to that first service, people that are still more comfortable on Zoom, right? And that's a lot of people yet. But that first half an hour is filled with the Holy Spirit, is filled with people that are, that are connecting with each other, although it be on the Brady Bunch wall. 
That's what I call the zoo mall, by the way. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit is there, is here with us, has not left us just because this happens to be pandemic does not mean our God has walked away. I know this has been frustrating as all get out. Even little things like hymn numbers, we just grab a hold of that, right? Because it's just a little piece of something we want back. But even when we couldn't be in this structure, the Holy Spirit was still with us. We were never, ever alone. We've got to look for it. It's there. You look for it in the phone calls. You look for it in the smiles. You look for it in, I haven't talked to you in a while. You look for it in, let's get together for a cup of coffee. You look for it in all those ways. Right? It's there. Now, do I know how long this thing's going to go? That's a piece of that question that I cannot answer. <laughs> I don't think there's anybody out there that does. No matter what the advice we get, no matter what it is, no matter where it's coming from, bottom line is, it is what it is, and it's going to be as long as it goes. And we can all point to stuff. But I don't think that's where we want to go. We don't want to look at length. We want to look to the flame bouncing on our head and on each other's heads because it is proof that the Spirit is here with us. Psalm 30, verses 10, 11, 12. Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. God is with us. Turn my mourning into dancing. Amen and amen.
we confess our faith by using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, believe in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. Holy God, you plant the seeds of faith in every nation. Enliven your church so that the good news of your grace may root and grow throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator, even the trees, shrubs, and flowers delight in your goodness. From the depths of the soil to the highest mountain, bring forth new plants. Restore growth to places suffering drought. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Judge of nations, we pray for our leaders and those in power. Grant them the ability to regard those under their charge with humility, dedicating their lives in service to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Divine Comforter, you show compassion to those in need and provide relief to those who, who call on you. Bless all who suffer, especially Ibby, Doreen, and Jean. Lisa, Lori, Joan, Jared, David, Nancy, Teresa, Judy, and Colton, Matthew, Rich, Jim, Pam, Kathy, and Kim, Ron, Ruth, Audrey, Pauline, Marlon, Al, Carl, Colin, Isaiah, Jim, Mark, Pete, and those we now name aloud or silently in our hearts. Bless people trapped in cycles of poverty and homelessness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign God, this house of worship belongs to you. We give thanks and prayer for our church musicians. We dedicate to you the joyful noise that comes from this place, the cries of children, the melody of voice and instruments, and the songs from the hearts. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Eternal God, we give thanks for our ancestors in the faith who are now at home with you. We look forward to that day when we are reunited in your new creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Shepherd, we pray for an end to the pandemic COVID-19. We are thankful for your gift of a vaccine for the virus. Encourage all to accept that gift. Pour your healing spirit on those who have been sickened by COVID and protect those working on the front lines. We name Cindy, Nick, David, and Joe, Jim, Linda, Tom, and those we name aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I know, we're not there yet. Staying in your seat, please offer a sign of peace to those around you. Please be seated.
as the grains of wheat once gathered on the hill were gathered into one to become our bread so may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you as this cup of blessing is shared within our midst May we share the presence of your love. As the grains of wheat, once scattered on the hill, were gathered into one to become our bread, so may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. Let this be a foretaste of all there is to come when all creation shares this feast with you. As the grains of wheat, once scattered on the hill, were gathered into one to become our bread, so may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. Please pray with me. Merciful God, everything in heaven and earth belongs to you. We joyfully release what you have entrusted to us. May these gifts be signs of our whole lives returned to you, dedicated to the healing and unity of all creation. Through Jesus Christ, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who calls us to follow his way of humble service and love. And so with the church on earth, all creation, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who came in the name. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, gracious, and merciful God. Everything is filled with your glory. We give you thanks for your promise and presence which has sustained the faithful in this and every generation. Above all, we give you thanks for Jesus, born of Mary, who in word and deed announced your gentle rule of justice, reconciliation, and peace. In the night of his betrayal, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his command to love one another, his life and death, 
his resurrection and his ascension. We pray for his coming again, even as we cry. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. And now we pray, your Holy Spirit, that all of your promises may come to us and your whole creation. Amen, come Holy Spirit. Amen, come Holy Spirit. Amen, come Holy Spirit. Amen, come Holy Spirit. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our friend. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, O God, now and forever. Amen. Make us bold, O merciful God, to address you as our Abba, as we pray. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. So at this point, you would pull off. the body of Christ given for you. And now the foil. The blood of Christ shed for you. Please stand as you are able. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. May God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine on us and be gracious to us. May God look upon us with favor and give us peace. Sings my soul, my Savior God to be. 
Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I wander, I hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. But when I God his Son, not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in, that on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. And sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. Go in peace, serve the Lord.